Hi. Hi guys, can you hear me? Question for you all. If I'm like off to the side, like how I have it, do I look like the right way for you guys? <laughs> like I have it, I have it landscape as opposed to portrait. Can you still see me okay? Can you tell that I'm a noob at this? Oh, hello, Queen Mother Hoops. Hi guys. Can somebody let me know if you can see me? Oh, hey Pooch. Oh, hey Moni. You guys can see me okay? Because I've never done it like where it isn't like straight up and down. It's like off to the side. Um, oh, it looks sideways. Really? Oh, shush, pooch. <laughs> Turn it back. Oh, I'm sideways. Oh, darn. Okay. That's what I was afraid of. Let's see what I can do here. Do to do. do. Uh-oh. I broke my thing. Hi, guys. So, I'm going to jump on the train like everybody else is doing it. And I want to do an unboxing because look what I got. Do, do, do. Oh, I should cover up my address. <laughs> I got my big brother box. La, la, la. Um, so I wanted, I thought maybe it'd be fun to kind of just go through this box and show you guys what I got. And um, I guess I'll just hold this because my tripod thing isn't really going to work. Um, and we can tell some stories and you can ask questions and we can talk big brother and keep me company as I relive these wonderful memories. Um, <laughs> Um, oh, you know what's so funny? You guys said, are you gonna have a P.O. box so you can send me stuff? Well, not that you'd wanna send me anything, but if you wanted to send me stuff, I actually do. So what I did, and it's funny that you asked this because I actually just updated this. If you go to the link in my bio, it's a link tree. There's multiple fun goodies that you can find there, which one of them is how you can book hypnotherapy, one-on-one -on -one hypnotherapy sessions which I've been doing a ton of sessions with you guys and it has just been warming my heart. I just love to see you happy. And, um, <laughs> Pooch, did you not get a, oh, did you not get a box? Um, yeah, so um, you can book hypnotherapy sessions, you can book cameos there, there's a link to that. And then I just third added my mailbox. Um, it is a mailbox. Um, it is not, where I physically am. <laughs> and because I wanted to make that clear that it is a mailbox because um, all my hypnotherapy sessions are virtual. So you do not have to be in Austin, Texas. Oh, Pooch, you got one. Okay, good. I thought <laughs> you, you tricked me. Um, you do not have to be in Austin, Texas to partake in the amazingness that is hypnotherapy. I have clients actually all across the world, which is pretty cool. So I love getting to meet a lot of different people. Um, so yeah, are you guys ready for this? Let's see. Oh, look at me getting fancy. Okay, here's my box. Also, we're in my office. Want to say hello to my office? This is where the magic happens, folks. Um, so yeah. Um, let's see what goodies we have in this box. All right, so, uh, let me, sorry for the craziness. I'm can't use my tripod. So here is everything that we got in the box. Um, so I will kind of take it out. Actually, you know what? I'm just gonna do here and we'll do like an unveiling. So the first thing that I notice in here is something that I was wondering about. And you guys know me, I like a good cap. I got my BB24 hat. I guess this, they were handing these out, not handing them out. They weren't a thing. Oh, it doesn't really look that good. <laughs> uh, I look so cool. I'm going to wear this everywhere I go. <laughs> you guys know that I, um, that I wear caps all the time. I probably will not be wearing this one too much, but it says BB 2004 on it. How cool is that? So, <laughs> broke me. <laughs> Oh yeah, oh sorry, <laughs> I look like a peacock. All right, there we go. Shouldn't have done that one first. Um, so these hats, funny story about these hats. I don't know if you guys are aware of this, but these hats were actually given to the HOHs 
Um, and the HOHs, I think, oh gosh, I don't think, I don't think Daniel got one. I think Jazz, oh, Turner got one first and then Jasmine got one for being like a festy bestie. And, um, and then they stopped giving them. My guess is that maybe like they didn't have the artwork, the rights to the artwork or something. <laughs> I don't know. It was like very weird. It was like, we were all excited. We were like, oh, we're going to get these hats. And then we stopped getting them. So I'm kind of glad that I got one here now that says BB24. So <laughs> you say I'd wear that hat if I was out and about. Um, yeah, maybe I should just wear this out and I'd be like, hey guys, know me from somewhere. <laughs> I don't know if I need that kind of attention. Also, shouldn't have put on the hat. You guys were asking, did you like? I got my hair cut. It was like down to here before, so I got my hair cut the other day, which is pretty fun. Um, yeah, so it sounds like we all got what would have been our HOH hats had they given to us. Um, let's see, let's, let's see what's next. Do, do, do. Ah, recognize this? Looks like an invitation, <laughs> an invitation. This was from the invitation HOH that Monty won. Um, I actually caught one of these, if you recall. Oh, it looks like it's still open. Oh, let's see if I got a red one. Uh-oh, let's open it, let's open it. Oh, I got one. Here, I'll show it to you guys. That's funny. You are invited. <laughs> Yay, I caught it. I actually caught this third, which is kind of funny. Oh, do you want to know something kind of bad? I'll admit this. And if Jasmine hears it, it's okay. I'll tell her too. So my strategy, <laughs> my strategy for the invitation was to try to pick up all the invitations that were closest to Jasmine <laughs> since she was in her scooter and I didn't think she could move around that, that much. Um, <laughs> I know that's kind of bad, but you know what? She ended up finding one first, so that strategy did not work very well. <laughs> she just literally puts out her hand and it's like, ah, catches an invitation. But I knew that she would um, target me <laughs> if she won HOH, so I was trying to do everything that I could to make sure that that didn't happen. Didn't work out that much, but she also didn't win, so it's okay. Love you, Jasmine, sorry, Mwah. Okay. So, but I got third. I think it was Jasmine, then Terrence, then me, then Monty. I could be wrong about this. And then some version of Daniel Nicole. I think Alyssa ended up getting at the end. I can't remember. I remember that, um, that Michael did not. He was really pissed about that. <laughs> he did not get picked for that. And he was very pissed because, of course, the only thing he does not do well in is the, the game of chance. Um, literally finding something like this. Um, that's like the only thing that he... Um, oh, yeah, you're right. Alyssa beat Indy. Indy didn't get it. I don't think Taylor did either or Kyle. Yeah, because I remember it being really dicey. It was like, oh, shit, like a lot of leftovers, you know, didn't, didn't make it in. But it was okay because Monty won. At that time, Monty winning was a good thing for me. At the end, not so much, but Monty won. And then, um, you know, uh, beat Nicole, because Nicole, I think, had a score of nine. That was pretty intense. Got like 11. And um, yeah, kind of crazy. Yeah, only Joseph, Monty, Brittany competed for the leftovers. You're right. It was pretty dicey. I was nervous about that. I think I got a score of three or something, which is kind of funny because I actually love, it, it was a very similar to shuffleboard. I think that's what it's called, shuffleboard. I actually love playing shuffleboard, or I think that's what it's called. And we had played a lot of bocce ball, it was kind of similar. So I thought, oh gosh, maybe I'm gonna do good in this. And then I did not. <laughs> because, let me just say this, okay? Because those tables were so freaking long. Like it was literally, the table was like the length of the backyard. I don't know about you guys, but I've never played like a 50 foot shuffleboard before. So, you know, to our credit, it was very different than what you're used to. But when I saw the comp, I was like, oh, maybe I could win this one. Did not, but at least Monty won. So anyways, that is my long story about my not so great strategy with the invitation, which, how funny is this? So they did not tell us this. Um, the invitation, we were like, this doesn't have anything to do with a festival. How is this on theme, right? 
we were not aware that there was a movie called The Invitation <laughs> that the comp was based on. They didn't tell us that. I don't think they told us that because that was something that I heard about once I got out of the house. And I like text, we have a group text of all of us BB24 people. And I text them and I was like, did you guys know <laughs> that the invitation was based on a movie? Like, no wonder, um, you know, we had never heard of that. So I thought it was kind of funny. Um, <laughs> somebody says the movie sucks. Can't attest to the how good the movie was. The comp, you know, was fun to play, but I would say suck considering I didn't win. So I didn't like it. <laughs> Anyways, so... Um, yeah, that makes sense why it wasn't festival themed. But they didn't tell us that. Don't you think we should have known that? But anyways. Okay, next item of business. Let's see what else they gave me. Do you recognize this? Uh, maybe you don't recognize it because I don't have slime all over me. This was from The Wall, which I think was called Conspiracy Fest. Oh my gosh, you guys. Oh, you know what's funny? Look at this. It's not even, it's just styrofoam. <laughs> it's just newspaper, <laughs> gooey newspaper wrapped around styrofoam. So that's funny. Um, the wall. I know this should probably go without saying, but the wall is so much freaking harder than it looks on TV. <laughs> so much harder. Literally the first time now, I am not the most physically fit person. I do not think that this is a surprise to anyone who has watched this. I'm not surprised to me. I knew that it would not be my comp, but let me say this. I did not expect it to be so difficult. Like the moment it just starts to tip a little bit, I'm like, I'm gonna fall. Like literally they're gonna say like, oh, Brittany lasted like one second. <laughs> you know, like I literally thought I was gonna fall the moment that it fell. Um, and then I was like, oh shit, like I gotta, I gotta, I gotta get in the game here. And so I tried to do some self hypnosis while I was on the wall. I know that's very typical of me, right? Um, and just trying, cause I always thought it was probably, I know it was a physical comp obviously, but it's just as much of a mental comp as well. So, um, yeah, it was very difficult, but Taylor was amazing at that. And you know what's funny? You know, we would always try to guess. I'm sure if you watch the live feeds, you'd, you'd hear us trying to guess what's going to be the next comp. What do we think it's going to be? And we've been saying the wall for weeks. So, you know, we can't really say that we guessed it correctly. But I remember, I will say one thing that I did guess correctly. Um, and I wish I would have told her before, not that it would have mattered. But we were thinking about what comp it could have been. And we were like... We were like, oh, I, you know, it could be the wall comp. And I thought, if it's the wall comp, that is Taylor's comp. Because what kind of body type, what kind of person tends to do well at the wall comps? What do you, what, what do you guys say? Any super fans? I'll tell you what I thought that it would be. I, the, pers the type of body type that tends to do well at the wall comps, not necessarily, is somebody who's very lean but very strong. You think like, I think Derek X won last season, right? Um, thin, lean, strong, a Pilates body, right? And Taylor is just the epitome of the strength and beauty that would win. You don't have to be beautiful to be that, to win that comp, but you know, she is that does so well at that, you know, that comp and that strategy, especially considering for you longtime fans, they've added that little wedge at the bottom so that you can't squat and hold on because that used to be the the winning strategy. I don't know if you guys remember back, was it James? He won that comp, um, you know, um, several times when he played various seasons. That used to be the strategy that a lot of people would use is that they would squat down and hold on that way. Um, can't do that anymore. So, because they add, you know, they added that little wedge thing. So you really have to be thin, strong, lean, typically is the kind of person, oh, having a butt does not help. <laughs> which I actually think is really funny. I don't know if you guys catch it. They actually included it in the episode. I fell off the wall. I think I'm second. Yeah, I'm second. You know, Jasmine jumps off the wall pretty much immediately as it starts. And then I, I last a good amount. I think I last 10 minutes after that, but I, I still am second. Terrence was right behind me. That's typically how it went. Jasmine, me, and Terrence usually... <laughs> usually got out first it's, it, at the beginning of the season, any sort of physical comps. That was usually the people who fell first or got out first, but not towards the end. Not when it got mental. I won some of those. Um, anyways, what was I saying? Oh yeah. So I fell 
And then I, they included it in the episode, which I think is hilarious. But I was like, it does not pay to have a butt in this comp. Because <laughs> it's the truth. I'm sorry. If there's any people who have butts, we all have butts, but has like, you know, a nice butt like I do. You cannot lay flat on that wall. Like there is, there is, there's, uh, you know, there's space in between the wall and, and, and your back, um, which does not help in that kind of competition. So... Um, yeah, so we'll see. You know what? If you don't like what I'm talking about, you can just leave. How about that? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for your comments. <laughs> okay, let's see what else is in this box that I got. Ooh, you guys will recognize this. Yet another hat. Ta-da! Stage roach. Where do you recognize this one from? Doop, doop, doop. It is Otev. Oh, Tev. That is also another comp that I have some stories to tell about. So you can leave if you don't want to hear stories. <laughs> I like telling stories. These are the stories that you don't actually get to hear. Um, which I think is, and I'm going to leave the hat on as I tell them. So it's extra entertaining. <laughs> so, oh, Tev, And I'm sure life eaters, you guys know this. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, I got out first in Otev, But there actually is a pretty good reason. And I'll show you. See this scar here? That is six stitches that were given to me in the upstairs diary room. The doctor wore a headlamp. <laughs> I'm not even kidding you. The doctor literally wore a headlamp so that he could give me stitches in the Big Brother house after Otev because I, um, yeah, cut myself. Cut myself pretty doggone bad. I saw the inside of my knee and that was not fun and it would not stop bleeding. Um, yeah, and so now I have the star, the scar, so I didn't need to go get muffin tattoos. Um, I have my own natural form of tattoo from Big Brother that will forever remind me of this experience, which is um, the scar that I got for my six stitches um, from Otev. I still don't exactly know how I heard myself. Um, it could have been a number of reasons. It could have been, which actually I'll show you guys because I did a little sneak peek of what's in here. So I kind of know what to look for. I found something else Otev related since we're on the subject. It's a sauce. Remember this? This is, oh, they gave me the Woodstack Worcestershire sauce. So here is the thing that we were looking for in the Otev pits, okay? Now, I don't know if you can tell, but this thing is like, I don't know if it's made of gla fiber glass. I don't really know what it's made of. It's kind of this plasticky glass type of thing. You can see how thick they are. Um, but I think a lot of people got their hands kind of cut up <laughs> on it. I didn't have nearly as bad cuts on my hands, but I only lasted one round. So <laughs> um, I will say when we had other things that were like this, later in the season, um, namely one of my favorite vetoes, which was the snooze fest clock veto that I won um, towards the end of the season, they gave us gloves. <laughs> and I think that was because Otev, we all cut up our hands from these things, uh, which was funny. So, um, <clears throat> and, um, but we did not have gloves during Otev. But I don't think that it was that that I cut my a leg on. I think there were like some pipes and stuff at the bottom of the Otev pits um, that I went in there. Um, oh, hi, Cliff. People are saying that you're here. Hi. <laughs> we have yet to meet or talk, but we've been DMing, which um, I really like. Um, so, yeah, so they had the Otev pits. Um, one of them near the back. <laughs> I'm using my little things to, to, to talk. Um, one of them in the back, one of the pits that a lot of people in our season, for some reason, I don't know, Michael and I knew that it existed. I don't know why other people didn't know that it existed. It's not like we have any superpowers. Um, but there was a pit in the back area past the corn cob that for some reason, everyone else that was competing just didn't know you could go back there. I don't know. The rules made it very clear that you could go back there. But I will say it didn't have water. It was just this like chalky substance. Um, and I will say I jumped into it thinking that it was going to be water like all the other ones. And it was just like powder. 
And I think, if I had to guess, although my adrenaline was going so high, I, I didn't even feel when I got cut. Um, my guess is that when I jumped in there, that's when I cut myself. Um, because I was expecting that it would be full of water, and it was not. Another fun fact about Otev. This was technically, I got some crap from people <laughs> on the fact that this is technically one of my veto wins because of the Festy Bestie twist. Um, and I clearly got out first. But I will say this, and Michael will back me up on this. We had a strategy going into this comp, which is another well-known strategy, which is that you should create your stockpiles of your different sauce answers as you go through. You create a stockpile so that you can go back and get answers later that you find. Well, when I knew that I was not going to find this answer um, and that I was going to be the last one, I decided to stockpile answers and put all the answers on the edge of that pool, close to where Michael's stockpile was. I didn't want to draw attention to his stockpile, but close to where it was so that he could jump in there and get the answers just really quick. Um, because with the Festy Bestie twist, you guys have to keep in mind that... Um, it really became, for a good amount of the season, a team game. And there's no doubt about it. Michael and I was were clearly a duo in this game. So I viewed a lot of the competitions in ways that could help him would also help me. And things that would help me would also help him. So it was definitely my um, strategy in that comp. Knowing that I was going to get out is thinking, what could I do to, um, you know, put these answers a little closer to the edge so he could grab them. And he said that he used a lot of those, especially in the later rounds. Um, a lot of those that I had collected and put on the edge for him, um, he had used them in the later rounds. So that's kind of a little known fact on that. Glad I was able to help out in that way. Let's see what else is in here. Should I take off this hat or I'm, gonna, I'm just going to leave this hat on. I don't know. I'm thinking you guys know what my hair is going to look like if I take it off. So let's see. Ooh, okay, we got some clothing. I'm sure you guys recognize this with the cape and the, and the shirt. This is from BB Comics. Um, that was fun. That was a lot scarier than I thought. Like, it is very high up there. Actually, it's distracting if I wear this because I'm talking about something else. Um, goodbye. Um, BB Comics was a lot. That was probably the only comp that I felt genuinely scared during. <laughs> <laughs> Which I don't know what that says about me. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, yeah, I felt, um, oh, look, I have Diet Dr. Pepper. They wouldn't give me this. This was considered a luxury item. Diet Coke, you can drink that all day long. And I did for caffeine so that I could stay up And since I'm not a um, coffee drinker. But um, Diet Dr. Pepper, little known fact, is considered a luxury item. So anyways, BB Comics was kind of scary. I definitely wasted some time. I think I got the third best time. It was Michael got the best time, then Taylor, then me, then Alyssa, then Monty, then Terrence, I think. Um, and so I did okay. Um, but I definitely wasted some time just being like, oh should I drop? This is so scary, especially because I landed the wrong way the first drop. <laughs> so if you guys notice, it's very hard to notice in the episodes, but I'm kind of limping uh, for part of it um, because I definitely did not put my legs up soon enough when I dropped the first time and I landed like and jammed my knee and that really hurt. So then I was like, oh no, I don't want to do this again. Um, so I was definitely being a little tentative and careful. But I did save some time. So if you're ever playing Big Brother again, here's a little hot tip for you. Um, or not again. If you were playing Big Brother. maybe Well, maybe some of you are playing again if you're um, um, BB Vets and are watching this. But if you ever play Big Brother or play it again, um, here's a tip. Make sure every round to click that button. Just click the button because you might accidentally... Well, make sure you have an answer on the board. Don't wait to put up answers. Put up answers on the board immediately, okay? Because you might accidentally get some things right. And if you could accidentally get some things right, you might um, save yourself some time. And I will tell you, that is exactly what happened with me playing this. I had Terrence Kyle's... <laughs> sorry. Whenever I think of Kyle's comic, it kind of makes me laugh. Kyle's comic and Turner's, which Turner's is also funny because it looks awful. It, Terrence up top, then Kyle, then Turner. I just had them randomly on the board. I clicked the button, didn't even need to go back another round, I guess. I randomly got three of them right, and I was able to, um, 
in the comp and save myself probably a good extra 30 seconds to a minute um, just because I randomly got him right. So definitely good. To, uh, not everybody who played that game did that strategy. And that's something that I tried not to talk about too much. I think I might have told Michael, um, but I tried not to talk about it too much because I didn't want <laughs> I didn't want anybody thinking at this point in the game, I wanted a little street cred. And so I didn't think that anybody, um, I didn't want the other house guests to know that I shaved off time on my score because of getting some things randomly right. But it is a strategy because not everybody did it and that cost them time. Yes, I am a shady queen. <laughs> I love that. Um, let's see. Okay, let's see what's up, what next is in here. Okay, I know what this is. This is our cat. Oh, <laughs> upside down. Cast photo. Oh, guys, that was so nerve wracking. I don't know about you, but I don't particularly enjoy getting photographed in my swimsuit. I'm kind of happy that I'm hidden though. I tried to get behind some people. And my arm doesn't look too bad. I signed over my arm, so you can't really see it too much. See, but our cast looks pretty great. We did this like day two, I think. Day, I don't think it was the first day. I think it was day two. Um, and then everyone who, oh, I think everybody signed it. Nice. Oh, they must have had the pre-jury people sign them. Oh wait, Monty didn't sign it. That's weird. Is Monty literally the only one? Oh, he signed it down low. Why'd you do that? <laughs> he signed it below Paloma. Monty, why Why would you sign Monty under Paloma? Why don't you just sign Monty up top? Oh, well. Everyone signed it but Paloma, I guess. Um, which is funny because when I signed mine, I signed mine right after I got evicted. Um, I signed mine right after I got evicted and... Um, no one, no pre-jury people had signed them. So I guess they signed them closer to finale night is my guess. But I'm glad I get one of these. I'm gonna, I'm gonna maybe put it in a frame or something. And I'm, I'm deciding to decorate my office in, um, in Big Brother stuff because, you know, why not? Maybe I'll put it in a frame or something. It's so funny to look at everybody too because some of us look heavier. Like I definitely lost a little bit of weight in the house. Not intentionally. I ate so much chocolate. Um, mainly because of stress. Um, and it's funny, I can tell that some people lost a little bit of weight. And then you can also see some people look way more muscular <laughs> in this picture than they did by the end of the summer because it's just hard. Without a full gym, you know, to maintain any sort of muscle tone, um, that's kind of difficult. So anyways, here's our picture. It is not as bad as I thought it would look. Um, and that's not a knock on... on don't come at me about self acceptance. I'm I'm plenty self accepting. I just mean who wants to take a swimsuit picture <laughs> on national TV? That is just not something I was genuine genuinely looking forward to. Although it was fine, but you know whatever. Uh, now this is something that is triggering for me. Does anyone have any guesses what it might be? Any guesses? I know this is kind of on a lag. Yeah, Cliff, those mini candy bars they supply are dangerous. I do eat a lot of those. Okay. Any guesses? Well, I think this is not. Sorry. There's such a lag here, I can't really actually get the guesses. But it is dun dun dun! The backstage shirt from hell. <laughs> Look at this backstage. Okay, so as you all know, I had to wear this lovely outfit, this shirt for, is Pooch still on here? I got the shirt, they gave me the shirt, Pooch. Um, I had to wear this lovely shirt for, oh, now your answers are coming in. <laughs> See, this is on such a lag, it's so strange. Um, I had to wear this lovely shirt for a week because Pooch decided to pick me. His strategy to pick people was who got out first in each of the first little premiere comps. Um, that was Paloma, that was Alyssa, that was not me. <laughs> to his credit, I will say that you couldn't really tell the piercing tint comp, that was the one that me, Taylor, Turner, 
Terrence and Joseph um, did. You had to put these little piercings all over your face. It was very difficult to be able to tell who was in last um, and who didn't, you know, who didn't do very well. Um, so he kind of just had to pick somebody. And he said he picked me because he remembered that I said that I belly danced. And he thought that I was a professional belly dancer as opposed to just somebody who likes to belly dance on the weekends. <laughs> Um, I don't really know, Pooch, if you're still on here, um, you can tell me why you actually picked me, if that's the, really the answer or not. Um, but I got picked, and that was really sucky, because this has been my dream since I was 10 years old, to be on Big Brother, and to already be in jeopardy week one of going home, um, was really not a fun position to be in. And it definitely, you know, my strategy coming into the house was, um... Lay low, right? That's You don't want to play too hard. <laughs> I'm sure you guys are laughing at this because you're like, well, that's exactly the opposite of what you did. But this is the reason why. My strategy coming into the house is to lay low and see, you know, how, see what personalities are like, get to know people, just, you know, kind of, you know, try to skate by as much as I could week one and not make any huge moves, not really do anything major. Well, when you have this backstage shirt on and you have nothing to offer anybody, and let's just be honest, I was kind of the odd woman out of, of the group, right? We have these beautiful 20-something, single, non-married, cute um, women that were also picked in backstage. And if it had anything to do with anybody picking it in the house, I knew that I would be the one that would be in jeopardy. Pretty much the reasons why I think I probably won the America's Vote are the exact opposite reasons of what it felt like in the house, <laughs> if that makes any sense. So it's like, it, it, and I can't even begin to describe, and if you watch the live feeds, I'm sure you have kind of a, a feeling of this, but I can't even begin to describe just how it felt. And, and let me just preface this. My week one was not nearly as difficult as Taylor's week one. Um, so let me, by sharing my experience, please, I am not negating Taylor's experience. She had it way a million times worse. But I do want to share that it was very difficult, and this was one of the reasons why Taylor and I bonded week one. Um, day two, actually, Taylor and I talked, is because she was being ostracized, and so was I. And I think one of the biggest ways that you can tell that people kind of write you off, and especially when you're backstage and you can't vote for anybody, you can't play in any competitions, you don't really have anything real to offer anyone long term, is the attitude and the feeling of the house was very much like, oh, we don't have to talk and get to know Brittany. She's not going to be here next week, so it doesn't matter. And when you feel that, and it's already kind of hard to make friends, like I'm just generally kind of an awkward person, when you're already feeling like that, and that's kind of what's happening, it, it's enough to kind of make you go crazy. So that was the backstage twist. They, I know a lot of people have answered this and I've mentioned this in interviews. They did not tell me that it was an America's vote. They did not tell me that I won it. I literally found out that I won the backstage twist and I would have been safe. Um, literally sitting in the hotel room after finale night, reuniting with my husband, he was like, oh yeah, by the way, Week one backstage was America's vote and you won. <laughs> and I was like, are you kidding me? Like what? And it's just so funny because I'm sure if you guys were on the live feeds, you heard me talk about all season being like, it's just so weird that America hasn't voted for anything. Why hasn't America voted for anything? They always vote for something. And I just didn't even put two and two together because they explained some of the rules of backstage, but I guess not all of them. We just thought that, oh, okay, somebody would have been picked or multiple people would have been picked to have to compete in that bye-bye backstage competition, probably against Taylor because it was either going to be Terrence or Taylor that would have to compete against them. And based on how things were in the house, I think Taylor probably would have lost that one. She probably would have had to compete against Paloma and Alyssa or maybe just Paloma or just Alyssa. I, I don't know. They didn't really give us all the details. All I know is that I would have been safe, which is insane, that... We thought in the house that it would probably be something like Pooch, the backstage boss, or maybe even Daniel, the HOH, would have to pick one of the backstage girls to compete against one of the people on the block. That's what our theory was, in which case it was pretty much guaranteed that I would have been picked out of Alyssa and Paloma. And Taylor would have been picked out of Terrence and Taylor. And so Taylor and I would have probably had to compete against one another 
for who was going to go home. And that just really sucked because we had already started a friendship. We both felt like we were kind of left out in the house. Um, I, the other girls didn't want to work with her, but I was like, okay, I, that should have been my red flag, honestly. But I knew that I had nothing against her. And especially when we were all sharing kind of our backgrounds and stuff. And she had shared how she had been kind of ostracized and bullied in high school. That just really resonated with me because that's something I had experienced as well. And I thought, you know what? I want to talk with her. And I remember, I don't know if this shit was shown on the live feeds or not, but I remember having our first really long conversation in the bathroom. And I told her, this was day two. I told her, I really want a strong woman to win this thing. And I think that could be you. I think that could be me. I just, I think that we shouldn't discount ourselves right now. Let's not count ourselves out. And we just really bonded in that moment. And it was really hard because, because the first couple weeks, like I didn't have very much to offer her at all with backstage other than friendship. And, um, you know, it's, and then she was in jeopardy, you know, the next week after. And I remember her coming up to me and being like, if you need to vote me out, it's okay. Like, I understand. Like, I'm rooting for you. Like, she was already counting herself out. And I told her, I was like, don't do that. I was like, don't talk that way. It isn't over. It isn't done. And what you know, by week three, the leftovers formed and the rest is history. So um, anyways, I love you, Taylor. Taylor and I are very close friends. I told her that I flipped the vote near the end of the season. We laughed about it. She's pretty much the coolest person ever. She understood that it was strategy, which that's another thing that they do not show in the episodes is that that decision for me was purely strategy. They try to make it look like a Britney spiral, which you know what? Do whatever you want, editors. I, I, I don't care. Honestly, it was strategy. I knew at that point in time, I had just lost Michael. He was my best friend in the game. It felt like a betrayal, which is a whole other story. I knew that I felt like I didn't really have anybody. A lot of people were distancing themselves from me at that point in the game. So I thought, you know what? My strategy only is to win. So who's going to stand in my way of winning? And between Alyssa and between Taylor, it was pretty clear. Alyssa had never won any um, <laughs> comps. Taylor had. Uh, Taylor had a much better social game than Alyssa. I thought, you know what? Let's let's shake things up. I have nothing to lose. I'm going to flip the vote. And then if Turner happens to, I don't know, stick with his best friend and not betray his best friend, that maybe this will go through. And what you know, the next HOH right after that it, for final three comes down to a tie between who? Me and Taylor. And Taylor wins. We'll never know what would have happened if Taylor would have left, <laughs> nor do we want to, because I'm very happy that she won. If me and Michael couldn't win too, I, Taylor, me, Michael, and Taylor had a final three. And, um, and, um, yeah, it was just, it was crazy. <laughs> I'm trying to debate if I should tell you guys the Alliance name of me, Michael, and Taylor's. Does anyone know it? I'm curious if anyone has heard it. Um, it's the unofficial Alliance name that me, Michael, and Taylor came up with for our final three. <laughs> And I will say I vetoed this alliance name because I did not want it go, to go down in the Big Brother history books um, because it would have been pretty much the worst alliance name known to man and it's based in an outside in an inside joke. Um, so, <laughs> oh, somebody's right. Something salads, right? Yes, the alliance, the unofficial alliance name. <laughs> I hope they don't kill me for saying this. The unofficial alliance name between Michael Taylor and I were the Smelly Salads. Don't don't that that it was unofficial so that's not really a thing no one should ever talk about it ever again it was because we cleared out this really stinky salad that was in the back fridge and so we decided how bad would it be if our lion's name was called the smelly salads um that was why and i actually kind of forgot about it until i think i was doing the reality recaps interview the other day and michael joined and he submitted a question and he was like why did you not like the smelly salads <laughs> Alliance name. He submitted that question for me and I thought it was hilarious. Um, so that was our final three Alliance name. But at that point in time, once Michael had kind of like blown up my game on his way out and once everybody was kind of distancing themselves from me in the house, I kind of was like, F all this. I'm going rogue. I'm, uh, you know, I'm on my own. I just have to win. And so pretty much all my decisions for those last two weeks that I lasted after Michael left was based in what's going to help me win competitions. I'm going to have to win my way to the end. Um, and that is why um, I thought I'd take the chance and see if I could vote Taylor out as opposed to keeping her. 
I did not know this, and she'll be the first to admit. She's like, Brittany, I should have told you. I don't know why I was distancing myself. I don't know why I was upstairs with Monty. There, you know, she's got a lot of things that she said she'd do differently too. But um, I did not know that if she was going to win that snooze fest veto, that she would have used it on me. We literally had not talked for like a good two, three days in between um, that veto comp happening and Michael leaving. Like, um, and so I thought, I thought, well, gosh, Michael just betrayed me. Maybe Taylor doesn't even want to work with me anymore, too. It was very weird. I know it doesn't make sense to the casual observer or even perhaps, you know, I don't know how much sense it makes to the live feeder. But when you're there and you're feeling it and you just feel the tension in the house and you feel like everyone doesn't really want to talk with you, um, it was... Um, you know, it's just a very weird sort of feeling. And so I didn't really know and we didn't really talk about it like if we were working together. Of course, she told me after I won the veto that that's what she would have done. She would have used it on me, which would have been really nice. And then that would have forced Monty to put up, put up Turner. Um, but at that point in time, I had a final three with Monty, Turner, and Taylor. So I was like, we don't need to force anything. <laughs> we have a final three. It's just the natural, logical thing that you should do, Monty, is to put up Turner. Why would you jeopardize Taylor um, at all? Um, and you guys know the rest, how that all happens. So I don't need to rehash all that. But that's why it didn't feel like this is even a conversation worth having. Monty told me he wasn't working with Turner. So if you aren't working with Turner, why don't you put him up? Um, and obviously... Um, <laughs> Obviously, he was working with Turner, um, and that, you know, I can't speak for him. That's his strategy in terms of how he handled that, um, but you know how I felt about it. So, anyways, that was a big tangent. I'm sorry. I talk a lot. Backstage. Should I keep the shirt? I don't know. This feels very, like, do I want this? This feels like a, like a, a bad omen. Like, I shouldn't, like, I should burn it or something. I should do some sort of ceremony or something. <laughs> I don't know if I should keep this backstage shirt. All right, let's see what else we got. Well, we got some clothing, which is kind of funny because I returned this clothing because I didn't want to keep it. So I don't know. <laughs> um, I got my ugly ass shirt from Pride Slide. This thing is literally made out of like hospital material. Um, it feels like a hospital gown just with flowers on it. So definitely will not be, um, <laughs> not be wearing that again. But I have it. Let's see what else I got here. What is this? What is this? Oh, yes. Okay. So this is very sweet. Julie Chen Moonves gave me, sorry, I'm doing this with one hand. I had this all propped up on a tripod, but it wouldn't let me hold it this way. It was holding it like this. So that's why I'm doing this. I got this. It says Faith Center Co. This is a note from Julie. Um, it's very sweet. She wishes me and my husband um, the best on our dreams of starting a family, which is really nice. I thought that was a very nice personal thing to say. And then she gave me, oh, I can't even get it out of this thing. You guys can see it here. It's a, it's a hoodie that says what her brand is. The Faith, what, a, what is it called? Um, Faith Center Co. So very nice. Thank you, Julie. Thank you, Julie. Yeah, Monty lied to you after Dire Fest. Yeah, I noticed that. That that's that is actually I will say, I gotta give him credit for this. Although do I wanna give him credit? I don't know. <laughs> Tell me. Um I will say that was probably, if you were to ask me, one of the biggest misreads that I had in the house was Monty. I trusted Monty um probably three weeks longer than I should have. And other than that, I feel like I had some pretty good reads in the house. I feel like that was something that was a stronger part of my game is to know kind of what was going on. There was a lot of times I was trying to do some convincing of people of what the real situation was and they didn't believe me or didn't listen to me or whatever it was and that ended up being actually what was happening. Um, Monty was the only person that I don't think, I really thought our big brochella agreements were were real. And so, and I remember, oh my gosh, when Turner turned on us and nominated me and Taylor, I was just completely caught off guard. Although I will say this, we got to give Alyssa a little bit of credit just as a person. I know you guys get all up in arms about me being friends with Alyssa. I'm sorry. I enjoy her as a person. I'm going to stand by that. Um, we had a good friendship. We didn't work 
too much in the game together, but I think it's because she's very similar. I see a lot of myself being younger in her. Like she's kind of like got like a little sister vibes um, for me. And so we're both pretty emotional and I just, I, I, my heart just kind of poured for her and everything that she had to sort of deal with this whole season too. So that's why we're, um, that's why we were friends. Not that I need to explain myself to anybody. We're friends. Um, but what was I saying with that? Oh, one thing that I thought was really nice for her and she kind of showed her cards and she denied it later, which I thought was really funny, but I'm sitting there right at the table. They're about to, 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 you know, Turner's about to turn the keys to say who he's nominating. He told me, Taylor, Michael, and Monty, he swore up and down that we're some of the closest people to him. He's never going to vote us out, leftovers all the way, blah, 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 you know, said all this stuff. He's about to turn the keys to announce his nominations. And I feel a hand underneath the table just kind of grab my thigh and just kind of like, give me just like a little squeeze, like a, it's going to be okay, kind of squeeze. <laughs> And it was Alyssa. It was Alyssa grabbing my thigh, kind of just like, hey, it's going to be okay. And it, I mean, that happened just a split second before I found out that I was nominated. But it was enough for me to be like, hmm, okay. <laughs> I see you there, Alyssa. Somebody knew what was going to happen. It wasn't me. Um, and it just kind of clued me in to the fact. And I just thought that was sweet because even though we were not working together, she was doing her whole after party thing. And I was still thinking that I was a leftover. Um <laughs> I was still thinking that was a reality. Um, I thought it was nice from human to human for her to just kind of be like, hey, like this sucks. I know, like that sucks kind of thing. Um, so, yeah. Um, sorry, I got off on a tangent again, but this is why this is why we're doing story time. Don't you want to hear the stories? Um, that was probably one of my, I won't even say it's a regret, but probably one of my biggest misreads was the fact that Monty, I thought he was team Big Brochella. And no, really, he just ran to the Direfest people the moment Direfest was over and just kind of spilled the beans. And if we would have known that he had done that, um, I don't know how that would have impacted the game. I'm not really sure. But it's just interesting to watch the episodes now and see that. I guess I just thought because he was always like, oh, I'm playing such a clean game. Oh, I'm doing this. That he just really convinced me that, oh, gosh, I must be the only awful person here lying. <laughs> no, we were all lying. That's what Big Brother is, lying for three months straight. Okay, let's see what else is in here. Okay, well, I'm definitely not going to put this one on, but I'll show you my roach costume. This is my the other half of my Otev roach costume man they really did a good job cleaning all this stuff because this thing was covered in gunk um oh nice this thing this was part of my costume oh it's got stuff all over it this was part of my costume for renfest i did not play that first veto um i did not play that first veto but i got to wear this little cute little flower crown and i actually it's funny because I lost it in the house. I lost it in the house and, um, oh, this is actually cute. I lost it and I could not find it. And I think Joseph had it for a while because <laughs> he was wearing it around a little bit because I had the white one, as you can see. Um, and, um, yeah, they must have found it for me. Thank you, big brother. Okay, let's see what else we got. This is weird, the stuff that they're giving us. I'm not seeing the stuff I wanted <laughs> in here. Oh, I got these. Oh, wait, they gave me <laughs> they gave me these other crowns, too. I didn't even wear these. Why, why, why am I getting these? Okay. Um, oh, nice. Okay, I actually wanted these pants. So these crazy pants, which are kind of fun, they're like bell-bottomy. I actually wanted them, but they were so gross that I didn't think that they were salvageable. <laughs> um... They are from the Horror Fest, um, HOH, that I lost by nine freaking seconds. Nine seconds. Is that last barricade? Oh, Joseph, you're here. Hi. Hi, Joseph. I'm unboxing my stuff, and I actually was just talking about you. Do you remember? Maybe you saw it. Sorry if you didn't. Do you remember that you had this one for a while? Remember this guy? I remember you wearing this. You look so pretty. <laughs> Um, yeah, they got it back to me. Sorry. I, 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 I let you wear it though. 
Um, let's see. <coughs> Excuse me. I like snorted. Okay. Anyways, these pants. They're from Horfest. And that was the HOH that was in the dark. Um, that was a fun one to watch back because I literally could not see what, you know, I was doing or what it looked like or anything. Um, oh, okay. Quite the hairdo now. Um, I could not see any of that. And um, so that was fun to watch that one back on TV because I literally did not know what I looked like. I just was basically like, oh, excuse me, skeleton. Sorry. <laughs> Get out of the way. <laughs> um, and yeah, nine seconds. It's so funny that last door, if I had to estimate, I know with the editing, you probably can't tell, but if I had to estimate, I probably spent, I was 15 minutes and something. <laughs> Does it sound like I'm saying horror fest? Horror fest. <laughs> Does that sound better? Scary fest. Um, it was not a horror fest. That would have been an interesting comp. Don't know how they would have done that one. <laughs> Very off brand for CBS. Um, yeah, I lost by nine seconds, and I mentioned that like nine times now. Um, but honestly, how they edited it, it is, I had 15 minutes something. I bet I spent the last, I'm not even kidding you, two minutes tops trying to do that last door. For some reason, I just couldn't. I think there was this big ball of like, I think it was um, fake spider webs that was like making this thing, it was just, it was tricking me. It was making me think it was the other side of the barricade, but it wasn't. Um, and so it, that really tripped me up. And if I just would have got that one as quickly as I got the other five doors, I definitely would have won that HOH. But actually, I mean, it would have been a great HOH to win, don't get me wrong. Um, it would have been awesome, but it actually things worked out better that week. The fact that I won the veto that week instead, because you want to be able to play the final four HOH. That's a pretty standard super fan strategy is that you want to be able to play this, the final four HOH because the final three HOH, um, you are, if you make it to final three, you get to play the final HOH, the final three part HOH. So if I would have known that I was going to win the veto that week, it actually was very good that I didn't win Horror Fest. Um, horror Fest. Um, yeah. So, actually it worked out. Now, the HOH I needed to have won was that next one. <laughs> the one that Taylor won, uh, which was the fashion whatever one that I lost by a tiebreaker question. Let's see what else we got here. We got some boots I'll never wear. Oh, these are my Woodstack boots when I was Hulk woman. Um, these boots help me out. Save me week three. Oh, this I guess is another version of my hospital gown pride slide outfit. Um, this is my grody cup. I'm sure you've seen me <laughs> drink many a soda from this cup. I drink some water occasionally. People are giving me crap about how much soda I drink. I understand. I do not usually typically drink that much soda. I am not a coffee drinker, and I don't know, unless, if, if you guys watch the live feeds, you'll know that most people stayed up till like 6 a.m. every single day. I was so tired, and you're not really supposed to be napping. I mean, there were ways that we got around it in the house. I'll share one of my best strategies in case you ever find yourself playing Big Brother. This strategy worked a lot. So you're not supposed to nap. You're supposed to house guests are supposed to be awake between the hours of 10 a.m. and 10 p.m. daily. Um, if you want to nap in the Big Brother house, here is my theory. And if you were watching on the live feeds, maybe you know, because it worked and some people used it. What you need to do is you need to go in your bed under your comforter and you need to like crumple and like sleep like this and make it so that like it looks like you're just crumpled sheets, but actually you're napping because it was very difficult <laughs> for Big Brother to be able to tell that somebody was in this crumpled little lump on the bed. Um, and I got away with many a nap being able to utilize that strategy. So I needed naps because I'm staying up till the sunrise most days. And that's why I drank a lot of diet soda <laughs> for the caffeine because I'm not a coffee drinker. Whereas Turner and all them were drinking like, you know, coffee nonstop. I was drinking soda. So that helps explain it. And also, you know, I do drink soda. I am trying to get out of the habit a little bit more now because now I'm like addicted to it after three months. So, you know. <laughs> yeah, you and Michael wanted a curfew. Yeah, we did want a curfew because we're rule-abiding citizens of this game. And it was like impacting the game a lot. So if you ever find yourself playing Big Brother, wanting to play Big Brother or cast in Big Brother, let me say this. 
sleep train. <laughs> sleep train. And you know what's funny is my sister even told me that. She's like, have you been practicing staying up really late? And I'm like, no, that's not a part of Big Brother. Why would I need to do that? Yeah, no, I should have listened to you. Sorry, Sissy. Should have done that. Okay, let's see what else we got. All right, well, I'm not going to put this on, but this is my Renfest dress. Again, not a comp that I played in, but it was really cool because it was the first veto, and it was fun because Michael and I were good friends. Um, Michael and I became friends day two, um, which is kind of funny, and I don't, they don't really show this in the episodes, but the live feeders know. Um, I was in backstage. Michael was on the block. He had yet to play a competition, so no one knew how good he was, okay? So let, let, just... Remember this, okay? I became best friends with him before I ever saw that he was a comp beast. So whatever Brit Flea comments, whatever. It's it's what it is. But just know that we were friends long before that. And it's so funny because they show this in the episode. They show him in the have not room, like kind of pumping himself up, saying, I can and I will, I or I can and I will. And then I literally come up right after that and just kind of try to give him a pep, pep talk as well. And we were like, okay, we have a two-step plan. Step one, get you off the block. You have to win veto, Michael. This is week one. <laughs> We're a duo. It doesn't make any sense. I'm in backstage. He's on the block. This, this duo does not seem like it's going to go far, but... You know, I don't know. We were just kind of drawn to each other. We we're both kind of more quiet in the group settings. And he just seemed like the kind of person that I'd be friends with, which is so funny because his personality is so similar to my husband and my personality is so similar to his fiance. And so when we met, I'm sure you guys saw some of those pictures. They're like the same. It's just, it's, it's very funny. It makes sense why we always joked about that throughout the season. We were like, oh, we were definitely cast to be friends. Like big brother knew what they were doing. Um, anyways. We were like, okay, step one, get you off the block. Michael, you got to win this veto. Step two, I have to get through backstage somehow. And then we'll go from there. <laughs> and wouldn't you know, wouldn't you know, he ends up being a comp beast. He wins that Renfest um, veto, which I was like, you know, trying to keep my cheers in as much as possible because I was just so excited that he won. And I didn't want to show my cards that we were so close right then. Um, and... Uh, I was so happy for him. So he did step one and then, you know, step two happened the way it happened, which was not ideal circumstances. But even if things would have gone differently and Paloma wouldn't have left the game, um, I would have been safe. So we would have managed our two-step plan from week one uh, regardless, which is pretty crazy. So let's see what else we got in here, hey? Let's see, okay. Sorry, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do this one-handed anymore. Uh, eh, eh, eh. Let's see what we got. Okay, well, here's what you guys have all been waiting for. And to answer your question, because I know it's going to be, many people have asked me this, I only got one version of it. Oh, I, maybe I'm speaking too soon. Let's see. Oh, how am I going to be able to undo this without setting this down? <laughs> Let's see. Oh, I'm ripping it. I'm ripping it. Here we go. Ooh. Anybody else like the sound of packing? What is that called? Pop, little poppy, pot packing things, tape, whatever. Uh, I don't want to hurt it, but I can't do this one handed. Good thing this wasn't a comp. <laughs> okay. You can leave if you want, but I'm going to set this down for like two seconds. Hello? Okay. I'm just gonna use both my hands. Let's see here. This is two. It wouldn't be much fun if I didn't show it to you, right? Ah, whoever packed this at CBS, you did a good job. consistency this was. I thought it was like cardboard, but it's, it's sturdier than that. All right, are you ready? I'll do a grand reveal. How about that? 
Da da da, Brit Flea, the head itch in charge. It's Brittany itch. Look at that. There she is in all her glow of glory. Want to see? My face kind of looks like me, wouldn't you think? They got my little nose and my little butt chin. The eyes don't look quite as crazy, but you know, we're good. Um, you have to zoom in really close. Oh, look, this is me in my first interviews. Hi, guys. I'm on Big Brother. <laughs> I'm on Big Brother. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. I can have a sense of humor about this. Um, yeah, so this is where I will keep this in my in my uh, thing. So I'm a flea. Brit Flea, obviously. Um, I'm sure you guys know this um, story, but I'll tell it to anybody who doesn't. <clears throat> I obviously, and you know what's funny? I know Terrence, woo, Terrence um, said the whole Brit Flea comment about me being a flea on Michael or something like that. And they thought it was really funny and they played the Zingbot thing. I can honestly say this with all sincerity. No one in the house came up with that before he said that comment. Like everyone was like, why did they make you a flea? And you guys have to remember, not all the comics, I'm not saying that this is the case of mine, maybe Big Brother, I don't know the artists what they had in mind. Maybe they were saying that I'm a flea because uh, Michael won a lot of competitions and I was his friend. I think that's kind of a little bit of a um, an interesting take. And I, I, I don't know if I'd call it sexist, but I think it's unfortunate because I think if, if the roles were reversed and it was a woman who won a lot, that maybe a man wouldn't get as much of the flea, you know, like... A flea type comment. I think you also have to recognize that, um, I'm sorry, there was a twist. It was called Festy Bestie. And if your Festy Bestie won, you were saved. I, that there, There's nothing I could do about that. I, I didn't I didn't even pick Michael as my Festy Bestie. In fact, I wanted us to not be Festy Besties because that would mean that we'd both be in jeopardy if we were ever on the block together. Of course, at the time now, and I knew this, and I even guessed this once it happened, and I asked him about it, and he told me he was picking me because I wasn't a pose pack, and he knew that I was his friend, so he thought, you know, if I could win any comps, that he might have the ability to save me. Um, so there are reasons why he picked me that I that I understood then, that I understood now. Um, but yeah, I guess that's just my way of saying it was the festy pesty twist. Are you gonna say that, um, you know, Joseph and Terrence were fleas because Monty won uh, an HOH and they were safe for the week. Like, it's just kind of funny, but I will embrace it. Brit Flea is fine. Also, you have to keep in mind that a lot of these are kind of like random. Like Alyssa's was like Mall Alyssa. Um, she doesn't like shop a lot. Like she's not like, <laughs> you have to remember last year, Ky uh, Kyland was the Kylander with the Scottish, um, you know, little skirt thing. Um, you know, uh, Azza's was a wizard. She's not a, she's not a wizard guys. <laughs> that was not the twist last season. Azza's not a wizard. Um, you know, there's, there are some things that, um, don't always make sense, right? They're not always prescribed to the actual person. I'm not saying that it wasn't a funny joke that Terrence say, and I know some of you guys are like, they played this thing. They played this thing. I know this guys. <laughs> I'm well aware of this. I think it probably was a really funny thing. I just don't know. I, I'm just telling you that the temperature in the house, other than Terrence saying that one thing, trying to make sense of it, is um, that everyone was like, yeah, we don't really get it. What people did get, though, was my zing, which is my crazy eyes, <laughs> which is kind of funny um, that I have very intense eyes, but I actually love my eyes, so we're good. Okay. Yeah, and what's really funny, maybe you'll appreciate this, I thought it was good. So they used it in the episode, I say, it's Britney itch, you know, like, I'm sure you're aware, like, that's something that Britney Spears says, it's Britney bitch. Um, I came up with that line, and they die laughing, and they're like, oh my god, we love it, we love it. Um, and so they end up getting it approved, and that line made the episode. So, that was not CBS writing that line, that was me. <laughs> so that was kind of funny. Um... I never thought you were a flea on Michael. Well, thank you. Um, I think Michael and I were definitely a duo, um, definitely complimented one another. I definitely tried to embrace more of a social strategy and he won a lot more comps. So I think, and I would do that again if I ever got the chance to play. I think well, how you should play Big Brother is find people who are strong in areas where you are weak and play together as long as you can. It is an individual game, but at the same time, finding somebody who has 
that skill set is always really nice. That's how you get ahead. What am I supposed to do? I know that I'm not very good at physical comps. Am I just supposed to sit there and be like, I'm no good at physical comps. I guess I'll just, you know, I guess I'll just shrivel, shrivel up and die. Like, no, you work with people who have your strengths so that you can be safe in those weeks where you can't save yourself. That is called playing big brother. So if that's being a flea, call me a flea all you want. <laughs> that's exactly what I was intending on doing. All right, we're almost done here. So I have my BB Fest ticket. This was the thing. Oh, that's funny. They even knew what number I was. Um, they, um, yeah, you said Michael carried everyone, including you. He carried Monty Taylor, everyone. So we were all fleas. Yeah, I'm sorry. The whole leftover should be fleas then. M Michael helped many a people, many a weeks, not just me. Um, here's my ticket. We'll never know if that, I don't think, I, I don't know. I have theories on if it was random or not where we got assigned, but you never know. Can't speak to that subject. And this is my back. Oh, this is the backstage pass. I forgot about this thing. Um, this, oh, I'm not going to put it on. That's bad omens. I'm not doing that. This is what Pooch gave me when he thwarted my week one game. <laughs> um, yeah. Why don't we call it Montfly? Huh? Monty's a flea too, if I'm a flea. <laughs> yeah, actually, here's a good point. There were a lot of people in this house, Monty and Turner, perhaps more, that didn't get betrayed in their game blown up by Michael. <laughs> Whereas I most definitely did. So I was a flea that got squashed. <laughs> I am saying this in, 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 with all sort of love, uh, Michael. We have talked about this um, many a time. But um, that's a whole other conversation that I'm not going to actually go into. You'll have to listen to interviews if you want to hear that one. So let's see what else I got in here. <laughs> I just used my teeth so I didn't have to. Ooh, yay! This is my key. My key that I got. Oh my gosh, it's so crazy to hold this. You guys want to see something crazy? So here's my real key, right? Ah, Brittany, key. Here is a key that I made myself. <laughs> it is made of cardboard, as you can see, that I cut it out. Here is a key that I made myself while I was manifesting being on Big Brother. And I literally Photoshopped my name on it. <laughs> and it looks pretty accurate, right? So let's see. Let's see them. Although it's a totally different color. I think one year they were gold. But look at this. What is that for? Uh... Oh, I should turn it the other way. This is called manifestation versus reality. Look at that. Man, that feels good. That is so crazy. As somebody who just always dreamt of, you know, being on the show, it is just, it's still a crazy feeling to hear hold what I created for myself that I could look at every day and say, I can do this, I can do this, this is what I'm gonna be holding. And then to actually hold the real one along with it. Mm, I'm gonna cry, it's, it's a really cool feeling. This was really, it was so stressful. Oh my God, I'm like overwhelmed. It was so stressful, but it was so fun. It was the coolest experience I could have ever gotten to experience. It's so neat. And it's just a really kind of life crazy moment to, um, to be holding both of them at the same time, to know that I made it come true. So crazy. All right. Whew. You guys don't need to see me cry anymore. You watch me cry all summer, but I'm very thankful. I'm very thankful. Oh, yeah, I got this back too. This is the little keychain thing that they put on your duffel bag. Um, yeah, so this was attached to my duffel bag, and they took it off, and I was like, oh, no, I really wanted that, so I'm glad I got it back to it. Um, let's see. Oh, I guess they gave me two of them. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. Oh, and another you are invited thing. Nice. Um, oh, this is fun. This is my little veto chip. When we pick, um, who's going to be in veto, um, in veto comps. Um, I think I got picked once. Did I get picked? I mean, usually I was on the block <laughs> or Michael was HOH. So during Festy Bestie Twist, I got to play. Um, 
so I played in quite a few vetoes, won in quite a few vetoes, but I think I only got picked to play once. I don't know. Maybe you guys know the stats better than me. I should have known. I should know this, but I don't. Um, oh, and then I got HOH letters. Oh my gosh. This is crazy. Should I read them? The HOH letters that never were. <laughs> I'm no good at doing this stuff. Um. <laughs> okay, I'll read you guys my letters. Why not? Because you would have heard them if I would have won HOH. And considering that I never won HOH, you never got to hear them. Okay, so here are my HOH letters. This one, first one is from Steven, my husband. If you watch the live feeds, or even if you watch the show, they superimposed him on the Woodstack veto, <laughs> which was crazy. I think um, Rob has a podcast said that there were there was one episode where Steven made more appearances than Indy did, which I thought was really funny. <laughs> Sorry, Indy. Um, okay, so here's Steven's letter to me. Dear Baby Cakes, that's what he calls me, AKA Litany. <laughs> For the non-live feeders out there, the house guests would call me Litany some, sometimes um, because supposedly I'm more fun when I have a white claw on me. <laughs> this is a well-known fact amongst my friends is that I'm kind of fun when I get a little tipsy and the house thought so too. So, um, Okay, Dear Baby Cakes, a.k.a. Litany. That was my house nickname. I thought it might be time for a head of household special edition of Why I Love You Letter. Now, let me just give you a little background. My husband, ever since we've been dating, um, every year writes me this book of all the reasons why he loves me for every Valentine's Day, which is like the sweetest thing ever. Um, it's not like, I mean, it's not like a chapter book or anything, but it's like this cute little love book. It's like a little picture book, um, which were really sweet. So he's doing a special edition version of why he loves me. I love you. Because you taught me that reducing a sauce doesn't mean throwing half of it away. <laughs> he thought, for any chefs out there, he thought when you know when a recipe says reduce a sauce, he thought that that meant that he just needed to throw half of it away. <laughs> and so I told him, uh, no, that's actually not what it means. <laughs> because you were right, I'm using your pillow because it smells like you. Oh. Because you were still surprised I wasn't observant enough to catch you writing your 365 day book. Oh yeah, so this requires some backstory too. Um, I decided this year for our fifth anniversary that I was going to write him a special edition of the Why I Love You book and make it almost be like a little journal. So I would write one reason why I love him every single day throughout the year. I know this seems pretty excessive, but this is our love language guys. Like we just, we love words of affirmation, okay? So I've been doing this book since October 7th of 2021. I did not anticipate that I'd be on Big Brother this year where there would be, you know, 90, almost 100 days where I wouldn't get to write this book. Um, so before I left the house, I was like, oh, no, what am I going to do with this book? Um, and I decided to um, to just give it to him before I left. Um, because I thought he would want to read it while I was gone, probably a lot more than when I got back and I would be missing a lot of the days. So he only got like 260 something <laughs> reasons why I love him, not 365, but you know, what can you do? But I did this every night after he went to bed because he usually goes to bed before I do. Um, and he did not catch me. So he said he loves me because I'm still surprised that I wasn't observant enough to catch him writing this book or to catch me writing this book. He did not know I was doing this. Um, because I'm somehow expecting you to respond to the daily journal I'm writing you. So clearly you must have magic powers. <laughs> he wrote me a little daily journal to kind of tell me what was happening, you know, in life. I still haven't read it yet, which I need to. Um, he's told me most of the things on it and to talk about his views on like the episodes and what's happening and stuff. Because I'm looking forward to our office visits during the day again, but not too soon. Um, he works in another room in our house and I work in this office here. And so we visit each other throughout the day. Because you are authentically you. Because your biggest concern going into the Big Brother house was my happiness. 
because even while you're not at home, your stray hairs still are. <laughs> Any long hair women can understand, especially with PCOS, you lose a lot of hair. And so I guess my hair was still around this house even after I left. Because you were the most beautiful woman on the planet. Because of the face you make when you forget the rules of a card game we played hundreds of times. <laughs> I am not very good at remembering uh, card games, uh, and he knows this. Because you're going to win Big Brother so we can adapt well to luxury in Bora Bora. That was always our joke, that if I won Big Brother, we would go back to Bora Bora, because that was where um, we had our honeymoon. And we told ourselves that we wanted to go every five years, and this is our five-year anniversary. Um, but it's a really expensive trip, so we are not going <laughs> every five years. So he said, because you're going to win Big Brother so we can adapt well to luxury in Bora Bora, meaning we can go on this trip, and then we can fill up this house with more than just house plants. Oh my God, I can't read that, that line without crying. I've read this one, by the way. This is not my initial reaction to reading this. I have read this before. Um, but I love that line because I know he's referencing us starting our family and filling up the house with more than just house plants, which is our goal, is to have a baby and... Um, that just is really sweet. I appreciate that. P.S. The whole, or love Stephen. P.S. The whole family is doing well. We're all safe, happy, and healthy. I finished my certification a few weeks ago. He got certified in data science. And I have, and I haven't adopted a puppy yet. <laughs> Remember to keep enjoying this moment and to most importantly, stay aligned. I'm so, so very proud of you. You've got this. So, really sweet. So that was that HOH letter. These other ones, oh my gosh, I haven't read this one yet. So this will be interesting. My sweet Brittany, congratulations. Oh, this is from my mom and dad. But I can tell it's my mom by how she addressed me. She always calls me sweet Brittany. My sweet Brittany, congratulations on your HOH win. We are all so extremely proud of you. I missed you so much. Especially the family video calls are not the same without you. But you have this amazing opportunity right now, so stay focused on the game and just know that all your family and friends are rooting for you. And if you get lonely, we are all sort of right there with you. Ha <laughs> ha. My my family definitely watched um, my family definitely watched the live feeds twenty four seven. So everyone is doing okay around here. Your dad is keeping busy on some cool woodworking projects in his shop. Stephen and I check in with each other every day or more. Oh, I love that. He is doing great. He is just a wonderful person who loves and supports you completely. We all do. <laughs> Hang in there, babe, and make sure to have lots of fun. We love you so, so, so much. Love mom and dad. So that's really sweet. Um, I never, oh, somebody said, when did you win HOH? I never won HOH. <laughs> I never won HOH. And you know what's kind of crazy? Is out of the entire house of anybody who had a significant other, I'm the only one who never won an HOH, which... I know that kind of sounds silly, um, but actually it's a really, really difficult thing. Everyone else who was married or was in a long-term relationship had a picture of their significant other, had a letter they heard from their person. Um, and, and what's kind of, kind of crazy is that I was in the longest relationship. I, I had been with Steven. I have been with Steven for 12 years. Um, and so I was in the longest relationship at the ha out of the house um, of anyone in the house, even including Terrence. And, um, and yet I never got a letter or a picture or anything like that. So I end up going 72 days without seeing or hearing from my husband, um, until the final four video messages that you guys watched. Um, that was the first time that I saw and heard from him. So it makes me choke up just thinking about it. That was so hard. It was really literally probably the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. Um, but yeah, it's just kind of crazy that, um, that, it went that long. Oh yeah, and to answer you guys' question, they give you, they have you write these HOH letters um, in advance. So that's why I have them, even though I never won HOH. So now I'm getting to read them now. Oh my gosh, okay, so this one is from my sister. Dear Brittany, I was going to write you one of my cheesy poems, which is this really, my sister writes these really amazing poems and they usually rhyme. Um, I don't think they're cheesy, I think they're great, but um, dear Brittany, I was going to write you one of my cheesy poems, but I figured I would save you from the potential embarrassment. <laughs> no, they're good. Wow. Where to begin? We're all so incredibly proud of your hard work and dedication this summer. The whole family has had such a blast rooting for you, rooting for you from the very start. 
Although it's just not the same without you being a phone call away, don't worry. We pulled Steven in as an honorary member of the family group text, so he is getting bombarded with random musings and baby pictures so he can share once you're back. As far as what's new with us, we're slowly starting to try taking the baby on more fun outings. So my sister just had my first niece um, right before I left the house, um, which was pretty awesome. Um, yeah, she was like a month old when I left. And so now she's four months old and she's so cute. Um, recently we took her out to a neighborhood, a neighborhood's 4th of July parade and festival. She wore her watermelon onesie and a big sun hat and basically slept the entire time. But at least the parents had fun. Ma and dad recently came down to visit and offered a few hours of grandparent babysitting so that Josh and I could sneak away for our first date night, which was a relaxing treat. Baby learned to smile recently, which is making our hearts melt every morning when she sees us for the first time. We can't wait until she can give you a big smile once you're home, which I have gotten lots of big smiles. We video call multiple times a week, which is really nice, um, and I enjoy that. We miss you so much, but are pulling for you to make it as far as possible in the Big Brother house. We know you can do it. Just keep believing in yourself and know that you have a whole band of supporters waiting for you outside. We love you so much. With lots of love, Courtney and Josh and Baby. P.S. I know I'd spare you a poem, but just a real quick one, okay? Let me leave you with this. No matter what happens on Big Brother, you'll always be my big sis. So give it your all, be yourself, and get ready for whatever's in store. We love you so much and hope you'll be crowned the winner of BB24. <laughs> That's sweet. All right. Well, I actually got a couple more, but I'm not going to bore you guys with this. Um, but I am excited to read them myself. Um, and that's pretty much my box, I think. Um, yeah, there's nothing else in here. That's it. So, yeah, that's all my BB stuff, which kind of is crazy. I tried, <laughs> I guess unsuccessfully, I tried to take that. Do you guys remember the live feeds that we would play that, um, that little... Um, what is it? It's a snow globe and it had a little golf ball in it and we try to like flip it. Um, I tried to put that in my suitcase because <laughs> I wanted to take that home. Um, but I guess they didn't. They took it out of my suitcase and then they did not put it in my box. <laughs> so I do not own that. I thought that would be a great memento to have, but no. Um, yeah. Were you able to sneak things out of the house that you wanted? No, I was not, unfortunately. <laughs> I'm realizing now, um, which I tried to sneak. I, I packed or I helped pack Michael's bag after the double eviction because he didn't know he was leaving, so he didn't pack his stuff. Um, and it was funny because I, I probably knew where his stuff was the most in the house. Um, yeah, were you able to get the gift for Michael's wedding? Yeah, this is the story I'm telling. Um, I knew where his stuff was most in the house. But, of course, I get called to the DR right after he leaves because, you know, I'm pretty shocked and upset. And they wanted to capture capture that fresh off the press. <laughs> so they asked for the other house guests to pack up his stuff while I was in the DR. And I was in there for a couple hours. Um, and they <laughs> all the other house guests didn't know where his stuff was. And, um, and so they missed a bunch of his stuff. And so later they asked, um, you know, he was like, I'm missing this, I'm missing this, I'm missing that. And I'm like, oh guys, like I know where all that stuff is. So I went and repacked his bag, um, uh, with some of his stuff cause I knew where it was. Um, and I tried to take this, the tray <laughs> that was in the bubble room for him. Cause I knew he really liked that tray. Um, and I wanted to give it to him for his wedding, but it was glued down to the top of the <laughs> to the top of the dresser drawers, so I could not get that tray. But I thought the things that were not glued, maybe I could have put in my bag, but I did not get them. Um, yeah, the shady cat statue. I would have loved that one too, but you would have won hide and go veto. Oh, I so would have won hide and go veto. I had the best spots too, where I was gonna hide things. I had like eight different spots that I was gonna pick between. <laughs> they were all so good. <laughs> uh, so we'll see. Any other questions? Let me see. You guys got any other questions for me before I go? This is kind of fun. Somebody said, why are the comments off? They're not. Um, so they get HOH letters when you go into the house versus after you win HOH. I don't know when they have you write them. I think they have you update them like periodically. I think that's what Steven said. Um, but yeah. Do a deep dive with Taryn. I'm begging. Um, me too. You guys, tweet him or tell him that I want to do a deep dive. 
I feel like I have lots of good stories that I could share. And there's probably, I know for a fact, there's a lot more strategy to my game than they showed in the episodes. That's for sure. Um, oh, you noticed my haircut. Thank you. I don't have a deep dive with Taryn. No one has asked me. Taryn has not asked me to be on his podcast. Um, <laughs> but I would love to do it. So if you want to tweet him and say, hey, um, we want to hear from Brittany. If you want to hear from me, tell him. Maybe maybe if he gets um, pestered enough, he'll ask me. Because <laughs> I love that podcast. I would love to be on his podcast. Um, let's see. You said, what was your favorite room or spot in the house? The hammock outside, definitely. Followed up by the bubble room. The bubble room offered me a lot of comfort and um, solace in my final two weeks. Um, I definitely spent a lot of time in there. I am not originally from Austin. I've lived a lot of different places growing up, but I have spent the majority of my time in Texas. Will I be doing another live session soon? I don't know. Do you guys want to hear anything more? Um, who do you not want to be friends from the house? Not going to answer that. I will tell you who I'm very close with, though. My friends that I have kept up with very much so after this season has been Michael, obviously, Taylor, obviously, um, Joseph, and Alyssa. I would say that those are the people that I have been texting with every day, if not every other day. Um, yeah. Oh, gosh, there's more questions. Let's see. Who do you plan to go see first? That's a good question. Um, probably Michael or Taylor. I know I definitely plan on this year going and seeing Michael and Hayden, his fiance, and Taylor. And then I'd love, I don't know where people are going to end up living and stuff, but what's kind of nice is Joseph and Alyssa only live a couple hours from each other. So, um, yeah, being able to just go to Florida, if they both are still living there, I can, um, you know, see them. Oh, shush. Alyssa did care about me. We didn't work together. <laughs> I like how you guys think you know my relationships better than I do. I, I, I know. I, I was there. I am me. Um, <laughs> we, we did not work together, but we are friends. Um, that's just silly. Let's see. I have to... Oh, did Steven see all of your cam talks in the bubble room? Yes, he did, which is so crazy. It's so funny. Whenever you talk to the camera, you're like, no one's watching this. I bet there's like two people watching. No, there's more than two people watching, I now realize. And he was watching a ton. So um, it's really, it was really nice. He said every time that I was talking about him, somebody would let him know um, and he would watch, which is really sweet. So he was kind of there and I didn't even know it. Um, let's see. What other questions we got? Is there a BB24 group chat? There sure is. Hasn't been very active, though. Um, let's see. We talked about that. Was Big Brother harder than what you expected? Yes. <laughs> a million times harder. I thought it was like kindergarten, and it was actually like getting a doctorate. <laughs> that's the different, that's the, the expectation versus reality. Um, do you get recognized now in Austin? Yes, I do, which is pretty crazy. Um, that's a question I'm not going to answer. How is your relationship with Indy? She hasn't really reached out to me since the show. Would you want to be on reality Steve's podcast? Haven't heard of that, but I like talking about big Brother, So sure. Did you know what was happening with Monty and Taylor? I, call me clueless and I will agree with you. I did not. I did not. All I knew was that for those two weeks after the double eviction, I had just lost and felt very betrayed by my best friend, who was Michael. And so I kind of felt like I was just completely on my own. I kind of was questioning every relationship that I had, including my relationship with Taylor. Um, and so I kind of was in my own little world. And that's just being completely honest. It was very hard. It was towards the end of the game. Um, I definitely was not my best self in the house. I definitely was feeling pretty paranoid and my mental health was not doing so well. Um, I definitely was just like, well, every man and woman for themselves. And so I did not really pay attention. All I kind of knew was I would roll over at night <laughs> and I saw that Taylor was not in her bed, but I knew that they were having sleepovers upstairs. I just didn't know exactly what was happening. <laughs> 
<laughs> which is so oh my gosh i watched that scene and i'm like oh my god what was your favorite meal in the house probably the meal that i had every day which was avocado toast and like english muffins have you seen Michael's cam talks comparing him to SpongeBob? No, I haven't. I don't know what that is, but that sounds funny. Um, would you come back for BB All Stars and who would you want to be on the cast with you? That's a good question. I would love, I mean, I don't know. Give me time. I need to forget how hard it was and how stressful it was. <laughs> I would need, you know, time to forget that. It's been too recently, but I think it would be cool to play Big Brother again. I don't know if my friends and family could manage um, having me go again, but um, we would see. And who would I want to be in the cast with me? I don't know. I mean, gosh, there's so many people. I would just be happy to play with any BB vets, really. Um, let's see. <laughs> I would love a podcast with you and Michael. Have you thought of that? That'd be kind of fun. I don't know. Aren't there enough podcasts in the world already? Like, do I really need to start a podcast? <laughs> Especially a Big Brother podcast. Aren't there a million podcasts? I don't know. It kind of seems like, ooh. Um, but that would be fun. Would you go on the Challenge USA or the Challenge MTV? <laughs> do you guys think I would be any good at the Challenge? No. We saw me on the wall. We saw me playing Otev. I do not think I would die on the challenge. I would literally be like, oh, RIP Brittany. Like, it, that would not go very well. Um, how is life going since being home? It has been really nice. I absolutely missed working so much. I mean, I would do the occasional Wellness Wednesday group hypnosis session or meditation session. Um, but that was not enough to to fulfill that missing void in my life. So I'm very happy to be back doing my hypnotherapy sessions. By the way, if you ever want to experience hypnosis, go to my link in my bio. You can book a session. They're all remote. Um, yeah, so it feels really good to be back home and back in my normal routine. Um, except for when I take long lunches like I'm doing right now to unbox this stuff to show you guys. <laughs> Although it's kind of late now for lunch, but... Um, I think that's the questions. Let's see. You and Michael, an amazing race. That'd be fun. I think that would be, we would kill that. We would do, I don't know. <laughs> watch me, watch, watch me say that we would do so good and then watch us like go on it and then watch us not do very good. That'd be really funny. Um, I think we would do pretty good. Have you seen any live feed clips of other people talking about you? <laughs> No, I haven't. And I've been trying to kind of avoid that because I heard that there have been some nice, not so nice things. Um, so, yeah. Let's see. Let's see. Is there any other question? Dude, you and me and Michael would be amazing. Would you do an Austin meetup? I think that'd be fun. I would like to do an Austin meetup sometime. I'm still kind of like overwhelmed by being around a lot of people. So I don't know how long that's going to last. That's kind of effect of coming out of the Big Brother house. Um, yeah, so, but sometime, once I feel like it's cool to be around a lot of people, maybe. Um, you're right. I don't need any negativity. I've been trying to avoid the negativity. Everyone's going to have opinions about you, guys. This is what I've realized. There are people who really love me, and I was one of their favorite Big Brother players of all time, which I think is <laughs> not necessarily a, a, a warranted accolade, but I appreciate it. There are other people that can't stand the sound of my voice. So you just, you win some, you lose some. It's okay. You have to be prepared if you ever go on Big Brother. But some people are going to love you, some people are not. Um, let's see. Who are my favorite Big Brother players in past seasons? I really love Nicole Anthony because I think we'd be friends. She's probably watching this and she's probably like, girl, I don't want to be friends with you. <laughs> but I've actually made some friends now from BB Vets, which makes me really happy. Uh, Elena Davies. I text with her all the time. She's amazing. I love her. And Kat Dunn, I've been talking to a lot. I love her. Holly Allen, I met her um, at Todrick's house. And she was the sweetest person ever and gave me the best post-BB advice of anyone I talked to. Um, 
I love Jessica from her season as well. How do you say her last name? Milagros, I think. I love her. I love her podcast. Um, she's amazing. So it's been really cool. I mean, I'm a huge super fan, right? So all of a sudden to become friends with these people that I've admired and loved for so long um, is just so cool. So I just really love that. Um, yes, you guys love all of them too, which is fun. I should watch. Oh yeah. Um, Kevin James, I've been talking to him on Twitter, um, messaging and he was so nice. Um, and yeah, he just gave me some really great post BB advice as well. And which is so cool because I watched his five hour Taryn interview. <laughs> Literally, I watched all five hours before I went into the house and he had such great advice and I really, I tried to use it um, in the house to far less success than he did because <laughs> he won. But um, yeah, so let me see. Oh my gosh, you guys have other questions? I feel like I've probably been talking way too long. Um, oh, somebody said, did you know that you're the reason I started watching Big Brother? I saw you in the cast reveal on Twitter and I liked your hand on hip pose. <laughs> I'm glad somebody did. How funny. How funny is that? Um, did you expect the Taylor hate from the live feeds to actually be so horrible, especially from Paloma and Daniel? I will tell you guys the truth. I have not watched. I've watched one clip, and I won't say who it is, but I've watched one clip of somebody saying some really awful things to Taylor, and I, this won't surprise anybody, but I started crying, and I thought, you know what, this is actually just really not healthy. Um, so if Taylor really wanted me to watch the compilations of all the awful things that people said, of course I'd do it. She's a really close friend of mine, but I think there's just this, a certain line you could just kind of have to draw once you're out of the house of just how much negativity you want to let in. And let me tell you, us humans are not designed to find out every shitty thing people have ever said about us. It is just, it is hard. It is hard. We are real people. <laughs> I know, hopefully this Instagram live shows that. I am a real human, Taylor's a real human. We are real people. And it is just really difficult to see people you know and love and oftentimes trust say really awful things about people you care about and, and about yourself as well. So um, I haven't watched. I haven't watched the horrible things. I just know that they're horrible. And I know that I know that that was just really difficult. And I knew that and, 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 and you know, in a way, it almost makes me a little I thought that Taylor and I, we purposely have hid our friendship from a lot of people because it didn't feel like it would help our game. It felt like it put a bigger target on us than we already had. And so there was a good amount of weeks there with, where Taylor and I were like secret friends, which is so sad. That's so sad. But we were secret friends and we would like at night, we'd be like, oh, I missed hanging out with you today. Like, how were, how was your day? Like, we purposely keep our distance because we knew it was better for our game. And um, it was so nice once the leftovers were really solidified and it was so nice to not have to be secret friends anymore. And I think it makes me happy in the way that no one ever said anything directly mean about Taylor in front of me. Because I think they knew. I guess the point I'm trying to say is that I don't think we did such a great job of being secret friends. I think people in the house knew um, that we were friends. Um, and yeah. Um I also know, and I've said this publicly, and I've told Taylor this a million times, one of my biggest regrets, though, in the game was when she was getting bullied by Daniel to one of my biggest regrets was not sticking up for her here and there. I just kind of went into that fight or flight or freeze mode, you know, and the tensions were so high and you're, it's all happening so fast. And I know these sound like excuses. They're not meant to be excuses. I'm just literally telling you what was going on in my brain. I just froze. And I know a lot of people in the house would would attest to that that it was just such a high tension i don't want to say scary but in a way scary like just you don't know what's going to happen i've never been in a situation where someone's yelling like that in this kind of environment that we just kind of froze and that's one of my biggest regrets is that i didn't just say i didn't just stick up for her or say hey daniel not cool or like cool it or you know something because if it was the real world you and i and i'm sure the majority of us would say something if we saw somebody be treating like treated like that and it's just, it's impossible to explain how it feels in the Big Brother house and how much harder that can be. Um, and I just wish I could rewind time and have said something, you know? So, it's hard. Um, 
yeah. But that's easy to say, you know, now. That's easy to say now. I, I fully recognize that. That's why it will always be something that kind of weighs on my conscience is that, you know, it's easy to say it after the fact. What's hard is saying it in the moment. And I wish I could have done it in the moment, you know. Um, it was very scary. So let's see. Let's talk about something more fun. Is there something nice and fun we can talk about? Um, let's see. Any other questions here? Mm -hmm. uh, oh, somebody said, please make your own podcast with Michael. <sighs> okay. I don't know. I'll talk to Michael. I don't know if Michael wants to be talking to me all the time. I, I take that back. We text every day. So I think he wants to talk to me. <laughs> uh, let's see. Do, do, do. I think I've answered most of these questions. Are you excited for Michael's wedding? Yes. Oh my God. I think I'm getting an invite. Will I get the invitation? Oh wait, look. Oh, it's the, it's the invitation to Michael's wedding. It says you are invited. Look at this. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. This is from the comp. But maybe that would be a great idea. Actually, Michael would not want his invitations to look like this because, um, oh, do you like this? Look, no filter Brittany. Filter Brittany. <laughs> Sorry. Um, Michael would not want his invitations to look like this because he did not get one <laughs> during that comp. So I'm sure he would not want his invitations to be like the invitation. But um, even if he doesn't invite me, I'm going to crash it. So Michael, I'll find out where you're getting married. <laughs> I'll be the creeper crashing your wedding. No, I know I'm invited. Um, That's not the real invite, by the way. Uh, let's see what else. What other questions you guys got? Do, 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 do. What was your favorite comp of the summer? I think I mentioned this earlier, but my favorite comp was the Horror Fest. Not the Horror Fest. The Horror Fest. Um, the one that was done completely in the dark. It was scary. And I lost by... Ah, Taylor! Hi! Taylor, I've been talking so long. <laughs> I should probably end this because I've been just blabbing on and on and answering questions. Um, but my favorite comp was the one that Taylor did not like, which was the horror fest. Um, I know that's not how you say whore, but it sounds like I'm saying horror fest and there's no whores in the fest. Um, yeah, her fave is my least favorite comp. And let me, Taylor, I'm going to tell them the story. So I finished that comp. I'm all covered in goo. I'm out of breath, right? They turned on the lights for like a split second just so I could leave, right? I didn't really see what things looked like. And I literally say to the cameras, which the cameras were off, I was like, oh no, Taylor's gonna hate this one. Because I remember Taylor saying that she didn't like forced fear. And I just thought that was such a funny and like endearing way to describe a haunted house. Um, and so, <laughs> and so I was like, oh no, um, Excuse me. I was like, oh, Taylor's going to hate this. And sure enough, she did hate this. Um, yeah, I wish they would have shown what I said to Taylor. Like, I so called that one. I was like, no, this is not Taylor's comp. Um, but I hate that you, I hate that it was as bad as it was. I didn't think it was going to be something like, you know, where you wouldn't be able to finish. So that really made me very sad to see that. Um, that was not fun. Um, let's see. Yes, we love Taylor too. I agree. Taylor is awesome. Let's see. Any other questions here? What else should we talk about, guys? Dun, 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 dun. Are there cameras in the bathroom? There is one, just in case you didn't need something interesting, but it would never actually show it. Why didn't you name your final three with Michael and Taylor? I mean, Taylor, I already told them. <laughs> I hope you're not mad at me. I told them about the smelly salads, although some of them already knew it because we talked about it, and they know everything we talk about. <laughs> I don't know why we, well, we tried to name it, but didn't I veto it, Taylor? Didn't I say Smelly Salads was not an okay name because we didn't want to be um, known as that? <laughs> I'm glad it didn't. I'm glad it didn't actually happen. Um, yeah, see, Taylor's laughing. <laughs> uh, I don't know. It's funny. Yeah, we're not the Smelly Salads. That's, that's our line saying not Smelly Salads, I think. I think that's what we landed on. <laughs> I don't know what was in that salad though. Um, you have to cook your, all your own meals and that was really hard because I usually use recipes and I'm not really much of a cook. So 
Um, let's see. Taylor's is my favorite winner in Modern Big Brother. I would agree. She's my favorite winner too. I'm so happy that I got to be on a season that I like who won. Like, think. That would really suck to play this whole summer. And what if I didn't like who won? <laughs> That would have been really awful. So at least the season that I'm on, when I get to watch back my own season as a fan, I'm like, oh, I'm happy with how it turned out. Um, so that's funny. Um, oh, yeah. Taylor, you told me about the Breakfast Burrito Club Alliance um, name, which that's better than a smelly salad, at least. At least those burritos taste good. I was glad that you told me. Actually, Taylor, I don't think I told you this. I was actually very glad that you told me about that alliance right before I left because Turner ended up saying it in his goodbye message. And that would have just kind of, that would have been like, what the heck? Like, <laughs> if I would have learned about it from him. So I'm glad you told me. Just like I told you that I flipped the vote on you and we laughed about it, which is, um, you know, funny. But, um... Do, 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 do. I've talked to everyone since leaving, some more than others, some only in a group setting. Oh, please do a live sometime with Michael. That'd be fun. Oh, we should do that. Oh, Taylor, what question do you have? <laughs> Tell me. What do you have? Um, I don't know why they didn't do intros. Uh, does anyone, Big Brother Wise, know this? If you do, tell me. I was like, I wonder what my intro is going to look like. I don't remember ever filming anything that could have been used as an intro, which I probably didn't. Did you and Michael ever name your alliance? Oh my gosh, this is Taylor's question. We did. We did. Do you know what the name was? The Chen Bots. <laughs> that was another alliance name. I, was, I got very finicky about alliance names. Leftovers was the only one I was okay with. Um, yeah, the Chen Bots. Um, that was, uh, Michael came up with that one. Um, I didn't know if that would be a good one. Cause I'm like, what if this gets too well known? And what if Julie is offended by it? Um, and I just didn't know about it. And so I was like, eh, I don't know. I kind of was like, eh, that's funny. <laughs> and then, um, and then I didn't ever say anything about it. And then I made Michael for his birthday. I think you saw this. I made him a, a friendship bracelet out of trash bags and, this sounds so creepy when I say it out loud. I made um, Michael a friendship bracelet out of trash bag strings and um, cereal box letters. And I, and I cut out TCB, the chin bots, and put it on the friendship bracelet. Because I knew he'd know what I meant by that. Um, yeah, so... We were the Chen bots. And then when and then when he saw that, he was like, oh, so you're okay with the Chen bots? I'm like, sure. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Uh, hi, Boston. I said hi to Boston. Yeah, I'm so glad the smelly salads still talk to each other too. I know the smelly salads um featuring Joseph. <laughs> Maybe that's what we could call it, Taylor. The smelly salads featuring Joseph. That was one of my funniest. I don't know. I'm sure you guys saw me crack up about this in the live feeds like nonstop. The five swatters, you guys remember that alliance? The five swatters and the fact that they were like, oh, plus Terrence. Like, why call your alliance five swatters? Like five people if you think, if you're including a six person. So I just thought that was so funny that we would always call it the five swatters featuring Terrence. Um, and so maybe it's the smelly salads featuring Joseph because he also would have been in our ideal final four. Um... I have not finished all the episodes yet, but I'm very close. My next episode that I'm going to watch is the one where I lose the final three veto. <laughs> so it's going to be a fun one. Oh, it's also the one, though, where um, and I've seen the clip, but I haven't seen the episode yet. It's also the one where Turner uh, confronts me about flipping the vote on Taylor. And then I um, say thanks for your comments. <laughs> which was the only thing that I could muster um, to say in that moment, which was so dorky, but I just like literally, my brain was just like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I was just spritzing, like I couldn't think of it. Um, yeah, that's funny. Um, oh my gosh, Are they having troubles with my ring? I will tell you, my husband saved up for this wedding ring for years. Do you, do you know, do you wonder why? We waited seven years until we got married because he wanted to afford this ring. I told him, dude, I don't need anything major. But he's like, if you're going to be wearing this, I want it to be nice. And it's a very pretty ring. And he picked it out for me. And yeah, 
if they had a problem with my ring, boys, you better, luckily yours is third and second, so you better be saving up. <laughs> uh, oh my gosh. Thanks for your, oh yeah. I thought I said thanks for your feedback, but I actually think I said thanks for your comments. I don't know. I wasn't remembering. I literally, I remember just like running to the bathroom and just pretending I was going to the bathroom. I like literally like fake flush the toilet because I'm just like, what do I say? What do I say? He's right outside. I know he's going to confront me. Like, what am I going to do? Luckily for Turner, and I hope he can laugh about this, but luckily for him, he does not like uncomfy situations. So um, I really lucked out there that he didn't try to call me out in front of everybody because I don't think I would have done very good. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. Okay. Oh, I know. I hate that he cried. I didn't want to make anybody cry about it. I mean, but dude, like you should have played your own game. What, what were you thinking? Why did you vote out your friend? I don't know. Of course, I can't say that. Sorry, I cannot say that because I literally voted out my friend, um, which, you know, thank God the thing didn't go through because then I'm, Taylor would have left and that would have been bad. But honestly, at that point, I was, I mean, I've already explained this to you guys, but at that point, it was just like, I felt like it was every man and woman for themselves and I didn't know who wanted to still work with me or who I could trust after the whole Michael thing. So, um, oh yeah, I called Monty's game mid. <laughs> I was very pissed at Monty for a long time. Um, yeah. Okay. Yo, thank you. Somebody's like, go eat. You're right. This has been way too long. This is just fun answering questions and talking. About, I love talking about Big Brother. So this is just fun. Um, yeah, let's see. I guess I should go. Thank you guys for hanging out with me, though. I hope you enjoyed my unboxing. Um, and... Do you go live on TikTok, guys? I'm such a bad millennial. I'm, I haven't done TikTok yet. I should. I think I have like 60 something followers. <laughs> I've yet to do like a video or anything. I'm going to get into it because I know that that's where the youths are. <laughs> the youths. Okay. All right. Sorry. I'm having too much fun. Um, yeah, this is fun. Oh, I'm glad you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for, um, thank you for, uh, joining me. And if you have any questions, maybe the next time I'm on here, we can answer them. I'll save them. I don't know if anyone would ever want to watch this again, but sure. Host a call with the Smelly Salads featuring Joseph. <laughs> maybe. That'd be kind of fun. Uh, I'll stay more active on Twitter, guys. I'm avoiding Twitter because Twitter can be scary. So I don't know. I go on Twitter occasionally. But okay, I'll save it. All right. Love you guys. Thank you for keeping me company. I will talk to you soon. Bye. Oh, how do I end this? <laughs>